What's up, everybody? You're watching Sue Stuff, and this is Bowser. All right, so let's start. 700 bucks. Add in $90 shipping, we're talking close to $800. In my case, that $90 adds an additional 12.85% of cost to the overall total. Depending on the country ordered from, you could pay north of $800 after calculating other costs such as VATs or other taxes. This figure is manufactured from the company First Four Figures. This video is not sponsored by them as I paid for this figure personally. So this is a completely independent review. The production run of this figure is set at 1,750 units. Of the 1,750 units manufactured, 1,000 units will come with an additional option in the form of an LED lit flame attachment. The 1,000 units with the optional flame attachment also come with a rechargeable battery and a micro USB cable. Starting at the base that Bowser stands on, it is 17 and a half inches in diameter, and that is measured from spike to spike. With the base, Bowser's total height stands at 18 and a half inches or 47 centimeters tall. His depth also matches his height exactly at 18 and a half inches or 47 centimeters deep and his width is 16 inches or 40.6 centimeters. With the optional flame attachment, the overall total depth becomes 27 inches or 68.6 centimeters. So while he's not overly hulking tall, his wide and deep stance make up the majority of the volume. He's almost like a solid cube of resin, if you will, which leads us to the next topic, his overall weight and mass. Now the base alone is 16.4 pounds, that's 7.44 kilograms, and it certainly feels solid. Now, Bowser's body alone weighs 27.8 pounds. That's 12.61 kilograms. The flame that comes with the exclusive edition adds an additional 3.85 pounds, or that's 1.75 kilograms. With the flame, this figure weighs a total of 48.05 pounds. That's 21.68 kilograms from making this video of just assembling him and disassembling him so many times, this figure wore me out. So how's the paint? You probably already noticed, very vibrant colors, right? His yellows, reds, and greens are incredibly vibrant, and he's hard to miss in any display. Note that the green on his shell has more of a flat finish as opposed to the green around his head, which creates a nice distinction and separation between the two greens. The dark base and his bangles have silver spikes, which are a nice contrast to the rest of his body. They actually do quite a convincing job at looking metallic too. These are hand painted individually in a factory, so it is expected that there are some human errors in this department. The most notable issue in the paint though is whatever technique they use to paint the spikes on his shell. The spikes gradually become darker and darker orange the lower you look, but there's clearly rings of faded paint at the base of each spike. This issue is notable because it might be on other figures as it seems to be related to whatever technique they used. Aside from that, I believe the paint overall is pretty well done. Even though the color palette is simple, I really enjoy the vibrance used on this figure. So let's talk about textures next. Paint and textures go hand in hand. Textures in a video game character collectible like Bowser have to straddle a fine line. You want 
the character to come to life, but you want to maintain the video game texture look and feel. The green area on his head has a distinct reptilian texture. It's very alligator-like. While adjacent, his snout and mouth area has a more leathery finish. That's a nice distinction between the two just on the head alone. The turtle-like shell on his back with the hexagonal rings. Even the spikes on his shell have these little toothy grooves, which is a nice touch. His hair has these ever so subtle lines to keep it looking like a video game texture and without making it look too real and creepy. The brick design in the base is simple and symmetrical, yet there is some depth to the brick design and just the right amount too. Other than his eyes and tongue, this figure has textured details everywhere. No area on his body was left featureless. Now the early adopters of this figure get an additional attachment that replaces the tongue with this. Generally optional display switchouts are tame. They don't typically do too much to add or detract from the main figure. This is not one of those times. The option to swap the flame in for display does transform this figure and make it extra special. The light up function on the flame has two modes, an always on mode and a billowing effect mode. The true disappointment lies in with the fact that there really is no way to lock this piece inside. So I'm gonna slide this in, and just as easily as I can slide it in, that's it. It rests in there based purely on friction. As easily as it was to slide in, it comes right out, just like that. So what don't I like about the figure? Well, mine has various quality control issues, and though I don't expect perfection from figures that are hand assembled and painted in mass, there's always going to be disappointments in that category, and results may vary, so I won't go too far into those details. The tongue here is supposed to magnetize into his mouth, but mine is missing a magnet. It was not in the box either. So I mean, it rests in there, and I figure I could just buy a magnet and take care of it on my own. Then there's whatever technique they used on the spikes on his shell, which isn't too noticeable when you look at one spike, but when you see all the spikes affected as a group, it's quite glaring. The figure is not one whole casted figure. It's casted in groups and then assembled at a factory. I think it should have been left in some pieces for us consumers to assemble because the weight of the body alone being 27.8 pounds or 12.61 kilograms is surprisingly difficult to manage in its form factor, being that it's so wide and deep in stance. The biggest disappointment for me though is the optional flame attachment because it's 3.85 pounds or 1.75 kilograms of resin that has no secure or solid support for installation. It would have been nice to use the flame to display every so often, but personally I have no confidence that it'll stay put attached securely over time. So I won't be using it at all except for the occasional photo perhaps. After all that, what do I like about the figure? And can I justify its price point? Trying to justify what something's worth will always be subjective. As for the things I like, this figure does have a very premium look. I do really enjoy the color palette used on this Bowser figure. He's so colorful, so lively, and stands out a lot. The creativity in the textures used were also done spot on. Not too realistic and not overcomplicated. Yet he has the dimension and the presence you would expect. I like Bowser's pose depicted here as well, as it's menacing and there's nothing else detracting from his stature. The round base is simple yet complements Bowser without being too distracting. Though I have expressed my disappointment for it, those that got the additional flame attachment, well, they're in for a treat as far as looks go. It looks great and is a fantastic additional optional swap out. The light up feature adds a nice party trick, giving it just a little more of a wow factor. With the flame on, Bowser has even more presence and looks even more premium. In conclusion, he is one of the most well-known video game characters in the world, reaching even outside that of the video game industry. At $700 retail, this figure isn't marketed to everyone because that's a lot of money and it certainly is for me. Who is a $700 Bowser figure for though? Well, either you love Mario, the N Nintendo universe or are a really big fan of Bowser. As a gamer myself and a lover of cool collectibles, I want a larger, universally recognized video game character in my gaming space. Sure, I could have gone with a traditional Mario figure, but his presence probably wouldn't be as felt or demanding as this Bowser figure. 
If you like showing off your collection and you want others to know you are about video games, this figure will definitely do that for you. This figure is flawed and it's hard to argue that there are much cheaper alternatives to go with for this character. But as far as Bowser collectibles go right now, flawed as it may be, I believe this is the one to beat. So, that's going to be it for this one, guys. Thanks for stopping by and taking a look at Bowser with me. And uh, if you enjoyed the content, hit that thumbs up. If not, thumbs down. That's cool, too. Also, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think about a $700 Bowser figure. I could have bought a $25 Amiibo, right? For more content like this, uh, hit that subscribe button down below. And until next time, guys, keep collecting what you love, and I'll see you in the next upload.